My name is Dylan Maiden. I'm 29 years old. I flew Drake the Tech here. I don't know the 18 years old. My mother has one before. I was a single mum, but it never really felt like I was on my own because I had good support around me. It was always close. I had him a lot as a kid. Had a lot as a kid. I was growing up as like, if you want something, you can do it yourself. And that's how my mother has taught me how to do it, watching her grow up with her disability. I've always loved physical activity. When we started, it was only a couple of us. And then I was like, we can actually make a proper team. And now we've got like 14 members. Dill plays wheelchair rugby, and he's the captain of the Wheelanders. He's really, really into wheelchair rugby, and just his passion for it. It's really cool and inspiring. Good stuff. The idea is you weave in and out of the cones, turn around, and then go around the outside and come back down. Frederick could take care is very different for everyone. Some people have heart condition, diabetes, but for me, it's all physical. As progressive, so you're not going to be able to do what you had planned in the future. He is a very positive person. He always sees the brighter side of things. I'm his number one cheerleader. <laughs> his FA makes him really tired sometimes. My symptoms at the moment are lost balance, coordination, my slurred speech. So when I was younger, my speech was normal. When I'm pushing forward, my whole body just wants to go with me. So I'm like chest strap, belt strap, waist belt. Yeah, I've got it on so tight that people think I can't breathe, but I can. <laughs> Dylan comes from a family that's really tight-knit. When I started, my grandfather, he was taking me to the games and fixing my wheelchair or fixing other wheelchairs. Yeah, when he's got the cycle on it. Oh. He knows all about how to fix wheelchairs. Both of us have been big supporters. Oh, yeah, but I don't go to the... No. But um, no, as far as the wheelchair rugby goes, I go in there and repair a few of the wheelchairs and sort of become the de facto man to fix things. I gave up my legs a couple of years ago because I realised, well, you can still do everything you want in a wheelchair. That's why I stayed independent. Hey. Hello. How are you? I'm bad. How? I'm bad. I grew up with mum having the bun and buff Do you want a coffee? Yeah, I'll make it. What do you I mean? was meant to be in a wheelchair, but I learned to walk when I was about two. And then we just went through various operations for me to get on my feet. And so raising a kid was a little bit more challenging. Um, but I always felt like I was well supported and that he had people around him as well, which he needed. How's the vegetarian diet going? Yeah, good. But I know if I was losing a lot of muscle and strength from the lack of protein. Oh, OK. But I had more energy. Because mum had a disability. When I was a kid, I grew up in a different environment to others, but pretended I had grown up like a normal child. So, how's the rugby going? Yeah, good. We got more people this year and about 11 players training. My family were very supportive, so that made a huge difference. And so I never really felt like I struggled. 
Um, yeah. So the team are happy with them? They're happy with the way it's going? Yeah. Yeah. Chrissy as a sold our mother has done very well. She's had a lot to put up with her own health. Because she's managed to get on top of that, that's reflected through to getting Dylan where he is. She would say, look, this is how it is. Just get on with it. Dylan's father, he, um, unfortunately, there's not much connection. And I wasn't too bothered because my grandfather was around. He's like more a father to me. He loves his grandfather. It's a big part of his life. We did a lot of camping with Dylan. He was very much a tear away. Dylan was here, there, everywhere, wasn't he? Yeah, couldn't, full on. couldn't stop him. Yeah, full on. Dylan was always a fiery kid. We clashed a bit because we were very much alike. Raising a teenage boy as a single mum, that was probably our most challenging time. Yeah, he rang us up one night and said, can I come and live with you? <laughs> Simple as. Wee Bree, wee Bree. So this is Bree. We've had her for a four weeks now. Amber spoils her rotten. <laughs> Very playful and she gets into people's food and eats it. Just like her mother. Yeah. <laughs> Me and Amber met in March 2021. And we met online on a dating app. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> I told her straight up before we met each other that I'm in a wheelchair. She wasn't worried. We were sitting at the octagon and there were seagulls. So he started making seagull noises from the Finding Nemo movie. <laughs> it was it was attractive in a strange way that he's just able to be himself. Do you think this one's too big for her still? The bumblebee. Yeah, the bumblebee. Well, the rest is history. <laughs> I'm not sure if her dresses fit just yet. That's a snow white one here. <laughs> I think it's crazy. I really do. <laughs> but it's cute. She's great. And she's training in psychology, so she's in the best family for her thesis. <laughs> I did not want you to miss out, so I got a present for you as well. <laughs> it's a hat, an eggplant hat. Oh my god. <laughs> Amber knows I don't take my disability for granted, though so she knows I can still get my food, get my own laundry and dishes, and if it's an issue, she tells me to do it yourself. So. <laughs> Smile. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've always been an independent person. This is my second place I've had on my own. It's the first time I've had a place on my own in a wheelchair. I noticed them doing the one I was 16, and that was playing field hockey. I was tripping up on my feet all the time and falling over. He had a TV above the garage, and I'd be sitting in the lounge, and next thing, Dylan would come walking through to go to bed, and I'd say to him, have you been drinking? Because of his funny way of walking. No, Nana, he'd say, no. And I'd say, you come back here and let me smell your breath, and he'd come back. I'd say, oh, all right, then. So I have to concentrate hard out for shaving. Take longer than normal. But we're looking pretty. At 18, I started getting a heat treatment. Well, I thought it was a pinch of nerve. Then a neurologist told me that it could be Frederick's tax here. When Dylan got diagnosed, I was very proud of him of how he handled it, because I probably struggled with it a lot more than he did. When I found out about my condition, the first thing I said was, that meant I can enter a Special Olympics. 
As soon as he got diagnosed, things started to progress. He was like he was drunk all the time. We joked because he actually got a, a card from the doctor so he could take night clubbing to say, I'm not drunk, I have FA. He was very focused. When he left school, he knew what he wanted to do. And, and that was to go into the catering management system. He had his whole world mapped out, his career was mapped out, everything was happening. And all of a sudden, the world just whipped his carpet out from underneath him. I had to leave Polytech because my health did progress. I can still move my legs and everything. I can stand up. I just don't have the strength to walk on them. And that's part of my nervous system. How you going? Hey, good, thanks, Dylan. What's up? How you doing? Great. Got my washing done today. <laughs> so. <laughs> so I'm organising a wedgie tournament in Geneva for the first time ever, and it's called The Bash. So I've got three volunteers at the moment, one driver and two helpers on the court. Dill is part of Parafat Otago now. He's really keen on someday um, taking on a leadership role. How many more drivers do we need? Uh, we've got three, but my mother is pretty good for backup. Two months after I joined them, the president came to me, and now he's training me to become the next chairman of Parafita Togo. So where are we at with the vehicles, the vans? Because of hospitality, we've got a lot of qualifications communicating with people. Um, do the vans have tow bars? Do we not? I think one does. Actually, I might just have a look. I thought I would get a job, but once they find out about my condition being progressive, it's a bit hard. If the vehicles have wheelchair use, they won't. There will be a job out there for me. I won't give up. Well, I'll see you tonight at training. Yep. Yeah. yeah, bye. I hand cycle around town. I'm not allowed to drive. They class me as a drink driver. And that's because of my balance coordination. I swear all over the way. I've had people come to me and ask can you do healing to me. I take it as a joke. Then I'm like, yes, yeah, sure, I'll try your best. So they actually put hands on me and start talking and they start moving my legs. And I'm like, it's working all right. <laughs> they just think I've been healed. <laughs> there was about 40 people in New Zealand when I was diagnosed. This condition was so rare. But I went to Australia because there's about 800 people over there with the condition. One of the people were completely deaf, blind, couldn't move. So I've seen the worst. It was very confronting. I was looking at Dylan's future and um, that was tough. There is no treatment. Coming back from Australia was a very dark time. <laughs> I felt like a failure. Just hid in my grandfather's room that he gave me, and I wouldn't come out. It was scary to watch. We were starting to think, how can we help? We had to have a crisis to get a solution. Unfortunately, we had a bit of a family situation that we had to deal with. And fortunately, within a week, Dylan had a place to live. And within a week of that, he was a different boy altogether. Freedom, let's go. Started doing gym workouts again. 
and I put my muke on and work out to that. Yeah, well, he got right into weightlifting and weight training, and yeah, I think that gave him something to focus on. Bodybuilding. I train four hours a day, five days a week, stuck to a strict diet. And four months later, I ended up winning the standing competition in New Zealand. Because he was similar to MS, Dylan kind of related it and said that if I'm stressed, I'm likely to progress. So it's up to me to do what I can for my own mental well-being. So he does what he can to keep himself positive. I decided to try giving up meat for my health. I'm a vegetarian for now, year and a bit. I've noticed a big difference in my health. I have more energy. Think of all the dark things that are happening and just release it all at the gym. My best friend, Nick, I've known him from high school. Come on, hopefully this time. He's always been positive, always had a positive outlook. It obviously has affected him, because um, there are times where he's like, a bit, yeah. What do fish even do? I don't know. Just swimming around, like, in the bloody place. Took me a while to cast out of my wheelchair. Keep falling out. No, sitting down. <laughs> I obviously can't even fathom what he's going through. Oh, no. But seeing how positive he is all the time, <laughs> it really helps me see positives and things that might be a bit rough. I never thought that we'd be fishermen or gardeners, but just like, well, now we can just sit here for hours on end and just do nothing. Still no bite. I'm being robbed by this fish right now. Unbelievable. <laughs> we both can't eat fish. Because <laughs> we're full vegetarians, so really? we catch a little bit in there and throw it back in. There we go. Look at that. Like yellow mullet or something. Nick's amazing. Nick has gone out of his way to support Dylan in all levels. Oh, you can just go. He even bought a house and made sure that it was wheelchair friendly. Is that? Might want to step back. Nick's one of the most important people in his life, and Nick has always been there. Oh my god, look at this shark! Whoa! Whoa! Yeah, yeah. yeah big boy! <laughs> Oh, God, stop. <laughs> He's so involved in Dill's life. That was a good catch. <laughs> and not just be there, but participate in wheelchair rugby and enjoy that experience with him. I was like, come play wheelchair rugby with me. He fell in love with the sport like me. Everyone can play. I'm able-bodied, so I'm a high pointer. There's no barrier to anyone playing. Because my condition is very hard. Uh, I control the ball, holding it or catching the ball, especially. I do my best, I give them all. If I fail, I learn from my mistakes and I'll just keep going. I realised how well he was really dealing with it when he had his 10 year anniversary. And he rang me up and he says, Mum, I want to celebrate. So after 10 years I was diagnosed, I celebrated and got myself a little present of a tattoo. The tattoo says live life to the fullest 
and it's got the date of when I was diagnosed, and it's got a guy in a wheelchair playing rugby to remind me of all my achievements and what I do now and keep doing. Come on. Come on, Daddy. Come on. Feels adorable. <laughs> yeah, he makes me laugh a lot. Yeah, good girl. Every day with him is like an adventure. Dylan and I talk about his future a lot. We don't sugarcoat anything. With his relationship with his girlfriend, if they have decided to have kids, for her to have a career and have a family. Dill always says that someday we'll have kids together. But after adopting Bree, I don't think we're going to get kids anytime soon. <laughs> Whoa, is she pulling you? No. <laughs> Dylan is very philosophical about life. <laughs> there we go. If I sit there and say, you know, how are you doing? Is there anything I can do? He just looks at me and goes, really? <laughs> Hello. Hello. He keeps me going because he tries so hard. So what's the fish? Dog Oh, yeah. He says, had I not got this diagnosis, I don't know who I would have become. He says, but I think my world and who I am is better because of it. Kelly's going to take the other wheelchair as well. He's this amazing person that I found, and he inspires me every day to just want to be a better version of myself. I've noticed my speech is getting worse. It's getting very hard for me to stand up. But uh, as long as I can show people that there's stuff out there for anyone to do, and it makes them more confident and independent, I'm happy. Ha, ha, ha.